But now, let's get back to the question that has got to be on the minds of many filmmakers, producers, and industry professionals from around the world. Where is my audience? The first question actually has to be, who is my audience? Absolutely. And if, the, if they start to answer you with demographics, you're like, no, no, no. <laughs> you take the next step, which is actually caring about the audience. So the biggest alliance you can have is with your fans and share your art with your fans. You don't have to wring out every, every dime out of your audience. And you, you were my partners. My audience, you know, my, I collaborated with you and you collaborated with me. Find your audience, build your audience, know your audience. What does this all mean? And why is this so important when you're trying to make your movie? Well, that's the question I explore in today's episode of How to Make a Movie, a Film Trooper case study, How to Find Your Audience. Film Trooper, helping filmmakers become entrepreneurs. With my dad, he's a dork. Hi, my name is Scott McMahon, and I'm a fellow film trooper. And my mission is to try to help filmmakers become entrepreneurs and learn new ways at making and selling your film online by applying the strategies used by successful online entrepreneurs when they sell their digital products. So I'm making a movie, a scary movie, and in the past episodes we explored why we love being scared and then what scares us. But today I've got to know who I'm supposed to be scaring. Boo! When all the experts tell us that we need to find our audience or know our audience or build our audience, I mean how the hell do you do that? Well, maybe it starts with a simple search. Come on. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do when we're trying to find our audience for your film is let's just use the major social media networks, Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. So here we are in a uh, website called Hashtagify Me. And on this site of Hashtagify Me, you can sign up for a free account. And let's just type in the word or the hashtag uh, scary movie since we're trying to make a scary movie right all right as we scroll down here the way this tool works is it takes like the main hashtag and then all the offshoots that could come out of it um, very interesting we have scary movie the movie supernatural uh, scream Halloween of course hall in horror and on the right hand side you can see the people who have recently um, posted on Twitter with the hashtag of scary movie. So it gives you an idea who your audience might be that might be adding the word scary movie. Now here's the cool thing. You can come up here to uh, usage patterns and we can see it's not a lot of activity going on with the uh, hashtag scary movie. So this might be helpful if we're trying to find a, a group of people that are using a, a term like this. But I think we might get better results if we use a search for like paranormal. Uh, it's interesting. We've got uh, fantasy, it's part of paranormal, uh, Kindle, maybe like the Kindle book. And if we go to the usage patterns, you can see that it's a little bit more activity than Scary Movie is. So that's a good sign. There's another tool you can use, which is over at hashtags.org. We'll type in paranormal. In this chart, it helps us see when people are tweeting and using the hashtag at what time of the day. Um, obviously this is central time, Chicago time, but it looks like a lot of activity is happening in the later evenings from every, anywhere from 6 all the way to 10 o'clock at night is when a lot of uh, usage of the word paranormal is being used. So we can find our audience if we go to Twitter and we search Twitter for hashtag paranormal. So check this out, we get a chance to see a lot of like novels being written in the paranormal, but it looks like a lot of people are pushing Kindle books, which would make sense, back to hashtagify me, which shows paranormal in relationship to Kindle. Okay, let's move over to Facebook, and let's do a Facebook search for paranormal. And over here in Facebook, we can go down to the more section, and what we're looking for are groups. So this is good to know because we have a lot of groups that show up. We have Paranormal Junkies in the UK. They've got about 1,300 members. It's a closed group, so you've got to you know enter that. Um, maybe you're looking for something bigger, like Paranormal Unexplained, and it has over 7,000 members. And the idea here is that I've got to join some of these groups, 
and just read a lot of the posts that people are putting up to get a better idea of who this audience is that I can best serve. Now let's head on over to Google Plus. So here on Google Plus, I can come over here to the far left side and choose communities. And I can do a quick search for scary movies. This gives me a good listing of what is out there in terms of dealing with scary movies or people that have hashtag scary movies. But I've already done some research and in my list of communities I belong to, I have several that deal with uh, ghosts and paranormal. This one in particular, which is Paranormal Chat, started only like a couple weeks ago and it shot up over 3,000 members and it's a closed group. It's a private group. But as you can see, just using the social media platforms, it gives us an opportunity to connect or find out more about our potential audience. Now, the next step is to build a checklist to create the ultimate avatar or our ideal fan. So I created this checklist of trying to discover who your ideal fan will be. And you can get a free blank version of this checklist in the link below of this video. But let's just start out with the main question, the first question, which is, who do you dream of hanging out with? Now, the reason you wanna ask yourself this is because if you're gonna make a film for an audience that you don't care about, then you're in trouble because people are gonna see right through that. You gotta have the chutzpah, I guess, to live with your audience and then serve your fans and be a good community member to your audience, your fan base for years to come because you're hoping that they buy your, this one film and then you're hoping to buy more films from you. So you better pick who you really wanna serve and who you really wanna hang out with. So I wrote in here, I dream of hanging out with people who are extremely smart, inspiring, and motivating. People who share a common curiosity about the universe. All right, so question number two you wanna probably ask yourself is what sort of people do you aspire to be friends with? And I wrote, um, I enjoy people who have a wonderfully witty and crass sense of humor, but who have a positive influence on the communities or tribes as Seth Godin refers to them as, where they provide value. These people are real and flawed, but strive to do better and help others despite their shortcomings. Number three, the question is, who would you like to hang out with on a daily basis? So my answer to this was, well, besides my wife and daughter, when they're in a good mood, <laughs> or when I'm in a good mood after my team wins, I think you guys can understand that. I'd have to say that I like to hang out with people who see more in me than I do in myself. Now, number four, would you want these ideal friends to become your ideal fans? My answer to that, is I would like my friends to call me out on my BS to keep me grounded. But I would like my ideal fans to apply anything I might be sharing to their lives in a positive manner. Since I'm trying to make a ghost story, I wanna connect with fans who are more interested in the deeper questions and wonders of the paranormal. All right, question number five, pretty simple. How old are they? Well, I wrote down here as 35 to 45 year olds. However, through deeper research on social media, I might discover that there's a huge fan base that is in like the early 20s. So this might change, but for right now, I need to put down an age and this is who I'm targeting, but it could change and it could pivot later on. Okay, number six, are they men, women, or children? Well, I wrote down they're men and women. So I'm not targeting to children, so that's helpful. What country do they come from? I wrote down the United States and Canada just because according to the research that you just saw, majority of people doing uh, hashtag paranormal or hashtag scary movies are English speaking uh, countries. So I thought I'd start with the North American countries where I'm at. Number eight, where do they live in? They live in the suburbs where some funny, funky, ghostly things could happen. Number nine, how much money do they make? Well, that's kind of rude to ask, but <laughs> you need to figure this out. So I'm saying like anywhere between 36 to 75,000 annually. And if you haven't noticed, this checklist is very similar to what a marketer would do if you hired them to try to track or decipher who your customer is for your product. Okay, number 10, what is their socioeconomic background? Well, most of these men and women come from working middle-class families. They're not wealthy, but it could have deep roots in Catholicism or Judaism. Judaism, sorry. Number 11, 
What movies do they like? How do they like to watch movies? Now this is a great question to ask yourself of your fan base because you're eventually going to be selling them a movie so you better know where they like to watch movies and how they like to move, watch movies. Uh, these men and women between the ages of 35 and 45 years old like to watch films such as The Conjuring, Poltergeist, and The Exorcist. They prefer to watch these films in the comfort of their own home on their flat screen TVs either through Netflix, iTunes, or Amazon Prime Video. So this is a really good question because when it comes time to sell my film online, you know, put aside a budget for an aggregator to get the film onto iTunes if this is where my audience is watching films. Number 12, what music do they like and how do they like to listen to music? I wrote that these working class adults probably still have affection for music such as punk rock, hair metal, and classic rock. Listening to music is not a regular habit as it's an occasional thing they do at parties when someone is playing Pandora on a digital media player or something. Number 13, what do they read? Books, magazines, blogs? How do they like to read? I wrote that these adults read books on paranormal investigation, real ghost stories, but mostly they read Facebook and some paranormal blogs. So if I'm going to be targeting them, I realize that I'm probably going to have to focus on Facebook as my main social media outlet uh, to connect with this audience. Number 14, who are their friends? Since most of these working class adults are also religious, they'll spend time with extended family and other church members. Their friends are connected through tradition. So this is important to understand because if you're trying to network and reach out to this potential audience, you have to kind of understand their world. Like who do they hang out with? You know, what do they like to do in their free time? Because that is what you're going to be asking of them, the audience, is to give up time to watch your film. So it better be in conjunction with how they live their lives. Number 15, what are their values? These adults value family and church. They place value on faith and look for explanations about the unknown through their doctrine. Number 16, what do they like to spend their money on? Money is spent at the bars with friends. Money is spent on accessible tech gadgets, maybe even gear for ghost hunting. Money is spent on entertainment such as video games. What does their daily routine look like? These adults wake up, take care of their pets, get the kids ready for school, go to work, converse with coworkers about the big game, come home, make dinner, watch TV, put the kids to bed, and in the waning hours of the night, they log online to explore articles and videos about the paranormal. Number 18, what do they never leave the house without bringing with them? For men, they never leave the house without their car keys, wallet, and smartphone. For the women, they never leave the house without their car keys, purse, and smartphone. Number 19, what are their fears? The paranormal unknown, that the death of their loved ones and their own death are meaningless. That is what they fear. Number 20, what are their desires? To be financially secure, to find proof that there is evidence of the paranormal, to feel validated that their paranormal experience was real. Now this is probably key right here because a lot of people have some sort of paranormal experience or they believe so, which is why they believe in it so much. So you've got to respect that and dive into that in terms of the emotional connection. At least that's my job um, on this next scary movie. Number 21, what keeps them awake at night? What are they worried about? Kids' health, money, parents' health, the meaning of their life. Number 22, what do they dream about? Being recognized for discovering the truth about the paranormal. Number 23, what do they aspire to become? They want respect and validation for the deepest desire to understand and discover the truth about the paranormal. And lastly, number 24, how can your film product fulfill these dreams? These ideal fans are looking to connect and be transformed by a story that explores the deeper questions they have about the paranormal. I have to make a film that scares and entertains them, at the same time tapping into these deeper psychological desires of validation and explanation. If executed correctly, my film can become a gateway of further discussion for these ideal fans. So that's a lot to take in, but as you can see, there's plenty of work to do in terms of using social media to discover who's talking about your specific topic. For me, it's going to be scary movies, horror, uh, paranormal. 
But from there, these communities and these groups, I'll be able to engage, talk, ask questions, you know, figure out really what makes these people tick. And then from there, I can craft a story that best suits their mindset and their world. So be sure to grab your blank questionnaire that's in the link below of this video so you can get started in discovering who your audience is going to be for your specific film. Great. So now that I have a better idea of who my audience is or who my ideal fan is, it's time for me to serve them, to serve them a delicious dish of value. But that's on the next episode of How to Make a Movie, a Film Trooper Case Study, Serve Your Audience. If you like this episode, then please subscribe. Also, if you're stuck trying to make your film, then head on over to freegearguide.com where you can get an equipment list of everything that I use to make a feature film for $500 with no crew. It's this thing behind me. Again, that's at freegearguide.com. Thanks again, and I'll catch you next time. Film Trooper, helping filmmakers become entrepreneurs.